Hello and welcome. My name is Paul and I'm one of the founders here at Co & Co Copenhagen where I do a good share of the bicycle design. At Co & Co we produce unique bicycles ideally suited to the urban environment. Among our offerings there's a growing selection of e-bikes. While e-bikes have been around for nearly 130 years, it's only been in the past decade or so that they've truly come into their own. A significant part of this evolution can be attributed to the advancements in battery and controller technology. Modern lithium ion cells boast a power density four or five times greater than the old fashioned lead acid batteries. And they occupy a fraction of the space. This means more power in a smaller package, resulting in increased efficiency and reduced weight and greater range. Now, while I won't delve into the technical details like motor effect or thermal dissipation, I do want to share some insights into the design philosophy at Cone Co. We've chosen to equip our bikes with hub-mounted motor systems, and I'll explain why in a moment. Hub motors and mid-motor drive systems have been around since the 1890s, sparking endless debates about their merits and their drawbacks. While some may argue endlessly, we believe both have their rightful place in the market. What truly matters isn't where the motor sits on the bike, but rather what it enables riders to do. Across Europe, pedelec regulations define e-bikes as a single motor requiring active pedaling for electrical assistance up to a maximum speed of 25 kilometers an hour. These rules ensure a harmonious blend of human power and electrical support. In Denmark, where we live, cycling is a cherished mode of transport and our rules reflect that jovial spirit. Here, no helmet is required and you can even enjoy a beer as long as you can ride responsibly. Check out the rules in your own country. Now, how about the second category, s pedelecs These are faster and even more powerful versions, but we don't carry them in our lineup. The rules for s pedelecs are stricter with age restrictions, mandatory helmets, and even alcohol limits akin to driving a car. As for the age-old debate between hub motors and mid motors, there is no definitive answer. Each has its advantages, but at Co & Co, we've opted for hub motor systems across our current models. However, let's briefly explore mid motors. Mid motor systems offer advantages like reduced unsprung mass, enhancing handling and comfort, particularly on full suspension bikes. They also allow for internal hub gears, ideal for urban cycling. Unsprung mass refers to weight not supported by the suspension, like wheels and brakes and that sort of stuff. Lower unsprung mass can improve traction and maneuverability, and it's ideal for full suspension mountain bikes. Now, let's clear up a common misconception. The power output of a pedelec motor is capped at 250 watts. Any perceived differences in power stem from gearing and internal losses not the motor type itself. Shifting to heavier gears will require more torque demanding more power from the motor. Optimal RPM can improve efficiency but doesn't alter wattage. Gear changes impact torque speed and motor power demand considering transmission losses. At Co & Co we prioritize versatile frame designs. These should excel both with and without a motor. We steer clear of overly specialized frames, ensuring our bikes remain serviceable and adaptable for years to come. One more thing we love about rear hub motors is their compatibility with kinetic energy recovery systems, curves, like those found in our Zeus and our near drive motors. These systems intelligently manage energy, offering riders the best of both worlds. In closing, I believe that reflecting on history and design alternatives enriches our perspective as designers and individuals. I hope you've enjoyed our journey. Thank you for watching.